Hello and good afternoon CSI 158 section 841 and 847 students at Anne Arundel Community College for the second eight week term for the Cisco Networking Academy Routing and Switching Essentials course. Today's Packet Tracer tutorial is going to be on Packet Tracer Activity 6.2.4.4 and this is the second uh, static and default route configuration uh, simulation for I this is the first for IPv6 but this builds on packet tracer 6.2.2.4 which we previously did a video on all right so let's get started we've got our addressing table here and it shows us our addresses for each of the interfaces on the router and again very similar to 6224 and so we're going to go ahead and dive right into the configuration piece so it says enable IPv6 on all routers and the command that accomplishes this is going to be IPv6 unicast routing. So we'll come in and we'll go from user exec mode into privilege exec and then we'll go into global config mode and we'll type in IPv6 and I'll do the question mark and you can see you have a number of choices here access list, DHCP, general pref prefix, host, inspect, local, NAT, neighbor. So we're looking for the very last one which is unicast routing. All right, so we'll type in, and then we're gonna make our way around here. Pull up router two, and we're gonna enable IPv6 <clears throat> global unicast routing. All right, so it's done there, and we'll come over here to router three. All right, so we've enabled IPv6 unicast routing on all three of the routers. So the first one, <clears throat> excuse me. So step two, configure recursive static routes on R1. And remember, the key here is that we are looking for recursive static routes. And this is very different from a default route or from the normal or the fully specified static routes or directly attached static routes. Alright, so on router 1 it says configure an IPv6 recursive static route to every network not directly connected to R1. And so this is going to be three different networks. So the first one is we'll do IPv6 route and we're going to put in 2001 colon DB8 colon 1 colon a001 colon colon 2. All right. So again, the recursive route will be a static route that only points to an IP address, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and shrink this just a little bit so we can see which networks we're looking at here. So this route or this static route is going to point to, <clears throat> excuse me, the interface colon colon 2 the serial 00, zero interface on R2 from R1 this would be our next hop so that's going to be the first static route that we use or I apologize I need to go ahead and put in here the next hop that we're going to be going towards so we're going to in let me drop back here a little typo there try to memorize that IPv6 address so 2001 db8 colon 1 colon 2 colon colon slash 64 so my route to get to that network will be a next hop of db8 colon 1 colon a001 colon colon 2 so in order for me to get to this network which is the network that sits here the local area network behind router 2 2001 db8 colon 1 colon 2 colon colon slash 64 which is what we're looking at here my next hop is going to be to this router interface on router 2 which is serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 so let's put that in and we should be awarded with 10 points and we are immediately incremented okay so now we're gonna put in the next uh, recursive static route so IPv6 route 
2001 colon DB8 colon 1 and this is going to be colon A002 colon colon slash 64 and so this network will be the network that connects router 2 to router 3 which is right down here behind us right and so we're going to put in a recursive static route for that guy and ironically this will be the same next hop as we had before so from router 1 we're going to hop to router 2 so I'm going to put in the IP address of the serial 000 interface and we should be awarded 10 more points as you can see completion percentage all right and then finally the third and final route is going to point to the LAN that sits behind router 3 and that is db8 colon 1 colon 3 colon colon slash 64 and one more time we're going to use that next hop out router number two and again those are all recursive routes you'll notice that router one and router three aren't connected if they were I would want to make sure that the static recursive route I'm creating to get to this LAN right here which sits behind router three does not go out to router two and then down to router three but preferably I would want it to go straight from router one over to router three okay so as you can see we're doing pretty good here we've got our first three static routes in and so those are all of the networks that are not directly connected to router one and they're all recursive because you'll notice they only indicate the next hop IP address they do not have a fully specified static which would be the interface to make that next hop as well as the IP address okay so let's go to step number three and so step three is saying configure a directly attached and a fully specified static route on R2. All right, so let's wrap up here with R1. So I'm gonna do Control Z, right? I could have typed end, but you can also do Control Z and I'm gonna do a write mem. And I'm gonna save my configuration. And now I'm gonna go ahead, and I'm gonna pull up router number two. Let's shrink this a little bit so we can see. Okay, so we've already enabled unicast routing and so it says configure a directly attached static route from R2 to the R1 LAN alright so for that we're gonna do IPv6 route and the network that we're going to so my route to get to the R1 LAN which is 2001 DB8 colon 1 colon 1 colon colon 64 so my route to get to this network db8 colon 1 colon 1 colon colon slash 64 how am I going to get there and so we're gonna configure a directly attached static route from R2 to the R1 LAN so if I do the question mark you can see we can provide an interface here and so that would be a directly connected static route. So I'll do serial 0 slash 0 slash 0. And now if I do a question mark, you can see that we can provide an IPv6 address of the next hop. But that would not make it uh, a directly attached static. That would make it a fully specified static. So let's see. Let's see what happens here. Am I going to be awarded the 10 points? And I am. And again, the difference, remember, a recursive static route is only going to point to the next hop IP address, right? And a directly connected route is only going to refer to the interface. All right, now I think we're getting ready to move on to the fully specified static route. And that, again, fully specified is going to be the interface along with the IP address. Okay, so step B or I'm sorry uh, task B under step 3 says configure a fully specific route fully specified static route from R2 to the R3 LAN there's a note here it says that packet tracer version 601 only checks for directly attached and recursive static routes the instructor may ask you to review your configuration for a fully spe specified IPv6 static route so let's go ahead and add in IPv6 route so in the way that you the good way to remember this is I fill in I say my IPv6 route 
to this network. And so this network is going to be 2001 colon DB8 colon 1 colon 3 colon colon slash 64. And that is the LAN address. If I pull this down a little bit, there it is right there. That is the IPv6 LAN address for the local area network behind router number or router R3. Now, we have this note here that says that it only checks for directly attached and recursive. So let's see what happens when we add in, and let me double check here. So I need the interface, so it's serial SE, or I'm sorry, serial 001. And so let's add that in, serial 0 slash 0 slash 1. And we'll do the question mark again to see now we can add in that next top IP, which would be 2001 colon DB8 colon 1 colon A002. And again, this is the outgoing interface on R2, or I apologize. This is the outgoing uh, interface is serial 001. The IP address of my next hop is going to be the, and let's double check this. It should be serial 000, but let's see. Oh, ser so it's serial 001. So this is the IP address of that interface. A002 colon colon two, whoops, colon colon two. So we're 40 out of 60, this should put us at 50 out of 60, but let's see if it's able to interpret that route, and it certainly does, right? So we've got that information in there. Now this is the IP address, whoops, that should be the IP address of the serial 001 interface on router R3, and let's confirm, R3 serial 01, and sure enough, that is correct. Okay. <clears throat> So that takes care of router two. So let's end and then write mem. Let's close down router two. And now finally, let's take a look at our task for router three. There's our IPv6 unicast addressing statement. And so we're gonna go ahead now and take a look at what's required here. So this is step number four, configure a default route on R3. So it says configure a recursive default route on R3 to reach all networks not directly connected. And so a default route that is recursive is going to point to a next hop IP address, not a physical interface on R3. All right. <clears throat> so we have IPv6 route. So my IPv6 route to the default gateway, right, or the the default route on this router is going to be to the next hop IP address of 2001 colon DB8 colon 1 colon A002 colon colon 1, if I remember correctly. So we've got 2001 colon DB8 colon 1 colon A002 colon colon 1. And so again, this is recursive in the sense that I'm simply providing it the next top IP address, and that should be the serial 001 interface on router R2. So I would send my traffic. If I don't know where it's supposed to go, I'm gonna push it out of the R3 router, and it's going to be routed to this R2 interface. And it's recursive, and so let's see what happens if we get credit for this. Our score should move to 60 out of 60. All right, fantastic. So I'm going to type end, and then we're going to go ahead and do a write mem and save our work. All right, I'm not going to test connectivity here. I'll leave that up to you to go back and forth between PC1, PC2, and PC3. <clears throat> Again, this has been Packet Tracer Activity 6.2.4.4, configuring IPv6 static routes, and we got to configure recursive static routes, we got to configure fully specified static routes, and we got to configure directly attached static routes. And again, the key here is to remember the recursive static route is only going to point to an IP address for the next hop. A directly connected static route is only going to point to the outgoing interface on the router on which you're configuring that static route. And the fully specified static route will point to both. It will point to the interface on the router on which you're configuring that static route as the outgoing interface, and then you also provide it with the next hop IP address. Okay, best of luck, and I will see you this week.